new paper PH452 is an alternative offered to civil and mechanical students. The nanomaterial is having properties of material or size in the nano range. Now, whenever we talk about the word nano, what is the meaning of nano word? The nano word starts with the very simple concept anything which is in the order of nano or 10 to the power minus 9 is known as nano. Now, if it is for the size, then we write it as a nanometer. If it is the time, then we say it is a length, so minus 9 seconds, so it is a nanosecond. For our course, nanomaterials, we have three reference books. The first one is the nano material by A.K. Madhubhadhyay. The second one is the introduction to nanotechnology and third and last is the nanotechnology by Sulba K. Kulgarni. Remember, these three are the textbooks as well as reference books which are very important to cover the complete course. Now, as we start with the nanotechnology, what is the meaning of nanotechnology? The prefix nano in the world nanotechnology is a billion. It's a one hour billion in status for minus n. Remember, nanotechnology is useful for those particles which are having size 1 to 100 nanometer. It doesn't mean that anything is written in the home time to minus 9 is nanometer. Like in a light 0 0.001 micrometer, it comes to uh, 1 nanometer. But the condition for nanometer is all nanomaterials are 1 to 100 nanometer only. The nanotechnology deals with structure of matter having dimensions of the order of billion of a meter. The nanotechnology or nanomaterials are not new technology. These are the things which are known thousands of years before also. Like carbon bond length, it is 0.12 to 0.15 nanometer. It is known from 18th century or 17th century. But the word nanotechnology is given much later than that. The other one, the example which is from biology is the DNA double helix as a diameter of 2 nanometer. Each helix of the DNA is having size of approximately 2 nanometer. The bacteria of the genus Mycoplasma is having size of 200 nanometer. Remember, it is again in the range of nano. It is slightly bigger than what we say as 100 nanometer is the range for nanoparticle, but still considered as the nano size material. The ratio of the size of marble to the size of the earth is same as that of the nanometer to a meter. Now, how do you interpret a nano size, a nano size particle? How you compare nano with any other substance? Then the easiest way is that it is the ratio of the size of marble to the size of earth as same as that of the nanometer to the meter. Nano science. What is the meaning of nanometer scale science? When we talk about a nano science, whether it is a physics, biology, chemistry, maths, engineering, or what? So the statement given by one of the known person, let's say, he said. Nanosciences are not physics, chemistry, engineering or biology, it is all of them. Because when we talk about a nano world, it includes biology, physics, chemistry, even each and every branch of, uh, branch of engineering. Remember, it is not about study of physics or nanotechnology, means the only physics. When you look on the uh, material or chemicals which are in the size of nano, we talk about a nano chemistry. The other one, biology, whenever you talk about the size of DNA helix or any other mycoplasma like that, then we say it is a nanobiology. Same way when we talk about the applications of nano. The most of the applications are explained by the different engineering branches like the nano electronics, one of the hottest subject where <coughs> the devices are seems to reduce to the size of nano and those are utilized in the industry. So, nanoscience is not physics, chemistry, engineering or biology, it is all of them. Now, nanotechnology is a new technology but nanostructure occurs in nature and have even man has used it without knowing. So, as I started, nanotechnology word is new but not the nano samples or nanotechnology. Remember again the nanotechnology word given around 1970. But, Avalon, Lycoroscope, Photography, these are the things which are known for the human being thousands of years before also. Like Photography, a technology using nano size particles. When we say nano technology or the photography, where we use a silicon, uh, silicon, sorry, silver halides. The silver halides are having the size of nano uh, 10 to the power minus 9 meter only. And those are used to produce the photographic plates. The realization of size. Uh, 
rather than looking on the right now, how to realize what are the different sizes. And I say, when we talk about the size of a particle uh, of a say chalk powder, it is in the order of 10 square minus 6 meters. Or the floor, the floor is having size of 40 nanometer. Same way, the thickness of our hair is in the order of 10 square minus 6 meters only. Now, when we talk about the, some, some of these smaller sizes like this, uh, silver nanoparticles or the diamond diamond bond or many other things which lies in the range of 10 to minus meters. Now, how nanotechnology is started? As I said, everybody knows about the small size particle. Even if I say what is the size of an atom, everybody said it is in the order of 10 to minus 11 to 10 to minus 12 meters only. But nobody says it is in the order of pico or pico technology because the only dimension doesn't define any new technology. In 1916, remember before that we say yes, some particles are existing which are in the order of minus 4, minus 12 or minus 10 or minus 8 size particles. But in 1916, the famous physicist Richard Feynman said one very important statement that is that there is a plenty of room at bottom. This is not the statement but it is the origin of nanotechnology or origin of a new technology which is invented just after the statement given by 1960 with these explanations. Now, what is the complete statement? It looks like a funny, that one is a of there is a plenty of room at bottom. But it started with the statement that there is a plenty of room at bottom and in contribution he said, surely you are the thing Mr. Feynman. That means he is also not sure that whether any theory possible for the size which are lying below 10 to the minus 6 meters. Till 1960, everybody knows about the micro world of the micro size particle, 10 to minus 6 size particle, MMC. But after Richard Feynman's uh, statement, or they say it is a famous statement given by Richard Feynman, after science, they start to work on the different things. The principle of physics, as far as I can see, do not speak against the possibility of anything atom by atom. Before this, we talk about a size 10 to the minus 6, which is much bigger than the size of an atom, which is in the order of 10 to the minus 9, minus 10, or minus 10 to the minus 10 to minus 12. So, according to it, none of the law says that particle cannot be placed atom by atom. It is the explanation given by Richard Feynman in contribution of the famous statement there is a plenty of room at, at the bottom. It is not an attempt to violate any laws. It is something in principle that can be done because we are proving our the origin of our invention of new small structures. So I said, just by looking on this statement, he said it may possible that we can look for the very small size. Since in compared to the size of an atom, we talk about the micro world and the square minus six or minus seven meter size. So they are the big structures, but by looking on the smaller size or at bottom is at towards the lower size, it is possible to talk about new small structures. And then uh, some of the technology you sh show that these are already existing and this may lies in the range of the new structures. Electron beam lithography, where we talk about the silicon chip, the mounting of silicon chip, all things are done by the electron beam lithography and the lithography is the technology where we talk about the nano fabrications. The existence of nanostructure in biological systems, if I say I don't know about anything, I don't know anything about the materials lies in the nanostructure, then it is totally useless or senseless. Why? Because even we talk about the human being, existence of human being, thousands of people, that time also humans have the DNA and DNA is having the size of the human nanometers. Manipulating a user attempt to make a new small structure having different properties. Now, by looking on this treatment at the bottom, there is a plenty of room at the bottom. Now, if I look on the smaller size particles, say 10 to the power minus 9 meter size particles, and it is possible to change the structure of any configuration, any atom, by placing or replacing atom from a non structure. Now, what is the meaning of characteristic? Yeah, sorry. 
We also predicted that the scaling issues would also arise from the changing of various dimensions. Gravity would become less important, surface tension and water hole subtraction would become increasingly more significant. Remember, these are the in continuation of the his famous statements. And he just explained that if I started with a new technology or if I look for the smaller size particle, then how things will change. And first part, he said there are a lot of things which shows the existence of nanotechnology, but at the time he also predict that there may be possibility that when we look on the nano size particles, the due to change in the dimensions, may possible that gravity becomes less important, surface tension and water vapor force subtraction will become increasingly more significant because these are known as the short range forces and those short range forces are very important when we look towards the smaller size particles. Professor Norio Taniguchi in 1974, the first time he defined the term nanotechnology. Remember, nanotechnology consists of the processing of separation and consolidation and the formation of material by one atom or by one molecule. Till 1970, we never talk about the atom by atom placing of molecule by molecule structures. We just talk about the material or its configuration. But after looking on the statement of Richard Feynman, scientists start to work on the smaller such particles and in 1974, uh, Professor Nenario Tenguchi, the technology where he said, it is consists of processing of separation and consolidation and deformation means in any element, in any material that like include the material atom by atom or molecule by molecule to change the properties of material. When I say it is the deformation of the material, I can change the nature, behavior of the material by placing them atom by atom or molecule by molecule. In that result, we can change the properties of material. The change in property will lead toward the new structures or new properties of material. Dr. Kerry Drexler found, uh, promoted technological significance of nanoscale phenomena and devices. After 1974, the various scientists started to work on the field in the field of nanostructures and in India or whole world started to work on the new materials, new technology or new devices with the help of nanostructures. Characteristic or critical length. What is the meaning of characteristic or critical length? Rather than understanding these two words, if I say whenever we talk about any material, <coughs> say resistance. Resistance R is equal to rho L by A. R is proportional to the length of the conductor. When you say the length of conductor is too high, its resistance is very high. Similarly, we can define the critical length associated with the particular property or particular material. So, every property of material has critical length associated with it. For example, the resistance of material that result from conduction electrons being scattered out of the direction of flow by collision with atoms and impurities can be characterized by a length which is known as a scattering length. So, whenever we talk about a material, like a material's property which is known as a resistance property or resistivity, in that case, we define R is equal to rho L by A, but its properties may be defined by the scattering length. The scattering length will define the resistance of the material and it gives the complete idea of the material. This length is the average distance an electron curve before being reflected. The fundamental physics and chemistry changes when the dimension of solid becomes comparable to one or more of its characteristic lengths. When I say the resistance of conductors are defined by R is equal to rho L by A. In that case, we need to look on the scattering length because the scattering length will define the fundamental physics or chemistry of the material. When size of a semiconductor material is in the order of the wavelength of electron or holes that KD current, the conversion takes place. Remember, in the semiconductor material, if size of material is in the order of characteristic then then we get to find the component. Now, what is the meaning of nanostructures? Why we talk about nanostructures? It's very easy to say the properties are changed when we talk about the surface area of the nanostructure or nanostructures. The easiest example, 
When you talk about some materials like zinc chloride or any other, which are which known to be non magnetic at micro order than this one minus six size. But when I reduce the size of the material in the order of n this one minus nine, it known to be a good magnetic material now. This is how properties are changed. C sixteen known known to be an insulated material or a material whose superconducting temperature is very low. But by if I block C sixteen with some material, say in potassium or calcium, then its superconducting temperature increases at very small size. So, what are the applications or what are the properties which may change when we move from 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 9 technology means in lower size? What will happen to the properties of material? When I talk about the surface area of the surface, which is the most important property of the material, the first is very simple one. When we talk about the material whose radius is given is r and its volume is 4 by 3 by r cube. And spherical shape particle whose total surface area is given as a is equal to 2 pi r square. Now, how the surface area changes when we talk about the smaller size particles? When the same object is divided into n parts, like uh, if I have a cube or any other spherical part, they yeah, are divided into n parts. Then the total surface area becomes n power one by three or total surface area times four by r square. Now I just try to explain it in the easiest way. Suppose I have a square uh, of radius hundred uh, one centimeter. Now I divide this square into hundred parts. Now uh, as I divide it into hundred parts, the surface area becomes increased with the factor of hundred one by three four by r square or This square with radius 4 by r square is divided into thousand parts. When we divide it into thousand parts, thousand one by three in that case, it is the ten times of the surface area of the one spherical region. So, if I divide the larger size particle into smaller one, the surface area covered by the material is increased by a factor of n power one by three. Where n power one by three is the given for the total surface area, and n is the number of parts divided into the given material. Now, the easiest way to understand the increase in surface area due to reduction in the size is these three diagrams. Just try to understand these diagrams. The first one, I am having a cube of size one by one by one centimeter cube. Whose total surface area is equal by six l square, so it is by six centimeter square since its side is of one centimeter. Now this cube is divided into smaller cubes where dimensions are one by one by one millimeter cube. Means the whole cube is divided into smaller sized cubes where each one centimeter is divided into ten parts. This one centimeter into ten parts. And this three dimension also in one part, ten part. So in this I will get the one thousand cubes, each of size one by one by one centimeter. Now, what is the total surface area? It's very easy to find out. Thousand into area of the each cube six millimeter square. Now it is six thousand. Millimeter square. If I convert it into centimeter, centimeter square by 100. So this cancel out and I get 60 centimeter square. So the surface area of the cube just by reducing the size of the individual cube is increased by a factor of 10, where I get the 60 centimeter square. Again, if you look over here, this cube is divided into 1,000 parts, and those 1,000 parts, 1,000 power 1 by 3 gives you 10. So it is. 10 times increase. Same way, if I reduce the size of cube into nano size particle, this its dimension is in the order of one nanometer, and the results are quite surprising. Just look over here. Here the area is six centimeter square. Here it is six centimeter square, and here it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six into ten to the power seven centimeter square. It's quite amazing. That the total surface area covered by material is increased by a factor of 10 to the power 7. Now, when I say it is increased by a factor of 10 to the power 7, it means 
the ABM offered to explain any property, to store any property, to fabricate any property is increased by a factor of 10 square 7 and in result the area offered by the material will help us to increase the property. The easiest example for all these properties is earlier we are talking about the memory storage devices, the property or CD and nowadays we talk about the pen drive whose memory capacity is around 16 GB or 32 GB. Now the increased capacity is because of the reduced size of the particle and increased surface area. So by using these smaller size devices you can increase the capacity of the material. Now why nanotechnology? Why we talk about the nanotechnology or what are the things which attract towards nanotechnology to each and every person in the world, whether it belongs to science science or belongs to engineering. The first one, economizing on material. By using small size particle, by using nanotechnology, by using nanomaterials, we can reduce the cost of material. Number two, the performance. The performance of material, like the, the speed, the magnetic properties or the efficiency of material may be increased by using the nanomaterials. Third one, Enhancement in the functionalities. Earlier we talked about one material having one or two important properties, but by reducing the size, by talking about the nanomaterials, we can increase all the functions of the material can be changed by the use of nanostructures. <coughs> Nanotechnology can be used to fabricate material literally molecule by molecule. This is the again repetition of the same statement that in case of nanotechnology or nanomaterials or nanoparticles we can place particles in such a way that it looks like atom by atom or molecule by molecule so it's very easy to change the materials property by simply replacing one atom by another or one molecule by another molecule so in that case we can basically change the properties custom design ultra precise new structures devices and systems if I talk about the smaller size particle, then their velocity will increase, their response time will increase, or in terms of increases, it goes towards the lower time periods. So, by using nanotechnology, we can change the structure or properties of material, and we can develop the new structures or new devices or new systems. Now, properties of the new materials. What are the properties which may have nanomaterials? You we are talking about the nanomaterials. The first one possibly increase length. <coughs> so possibly increased strength. Now when we talk about a nanosized particle, the strength of material is changing. However, in this case we are talking about a mechanical strength. So the property of material is changed just by reducing the size and it as its size reduces, the properties are changed and because of reduction in size, we are having the increased strength of the material. The non-hardest <coughs> substance in nature is the diamond and the softest one is the graphite. But the rolled graphite in the form of carbon in is having better strength than the diamond. So, by changing the dimensions of material, it is possible to change the strength of the material. Reduced weight. It is very easy to explain that when we talk about a smaller size, the weight of the material decreases and it means it is having the lighter reason or lighter weight. Greater electrical conductivity. If I placed material in such a way that each atom is placed by atom by atom or molecule by molecule, then I can change the property of material and in result of the nanostructures of some material which are bad conductor of electricity at uh, longer than say micro or mini size but when we talk about minimum size they are the good conductor of electricity and the last one is the ability to change shape or color on demand when you reach some standard references of you nano know, technology like even in case of the R reference charge for the introduction to nanotechnology they explained that how nanotechnology started to exist or started in our life but without knowing or without giving the name. 
ability to change the shape or color on demands by doing simply some nano particles or by placing some nano particles on the top of the material it can change its shape or color and it is observed around 200 or 300 years before in the case 1600 or 1700s it is already observed that yes by putting some material on a cup it is a best example given in the book where you find that then a material is floating on the cup and it changes its shape no, sorry it changes its color in the different part of the day Now, what are the nanostructures? When we talk about the nanomaterials, it looks that anything which is in the range of 10 to the minus 9 meters are known as nanomaterials. But what are the different structures? How do we define different nanostructures? Then we are going to talk about the four structures. One is the bulk, which is in the range of 100 plus nanometer. Anything, any material which is any size of 100 nanometer or more are known as bulk. Mostly, we talk about the bulk size particle means those materials which are having the crystalline structures. The second one is the well, third one is the wire, and fourth one is the dot. Now, without looking on any property, just try to understand these diagram. The first one we are going to go over each and every dimension. This one is an above 100 nanometer, this one above 100 meter, and this is also above 100 meter. That's why it is known as a bulk. Now, if I reduce if one of the dimension of material of bulk into nano size, then it is known as a quantum well. So, how to define quantum well? A substance or a material or a particle whose one dimension is in the order of nanometer is known as quantum well. Now, instead of reducing its one size to the nano, if I reduce its two dimension, this dimension, and this dimension to the nano, then it is known as a quantum well. Those material those two dimensions are in the narrow range are known as quantum wires and if it three dimensions that's why inside all three dimensions lies in the range of 10 to the minus 9 to the these are the quantum dots quantum wire is a structure in which two dimensions are reduced to the narrow range while the other two dimensions remain large the quantum loop is a structure in which three dimensions are reduced to the narrow range while other sorry now, next one is the progression of quantum nanostructures. After understanding about the nanostructures, quantum wire, quantum wire, quantum dot, and bulk material. Next one is the introduction or an idea about the progression of the quantum nanostructures. How to prepare quantum nanostructures? So, whenever you talk about quantum nanostructures, there are two approaches. The first one is the bottom up method, and the second one is top down method. It's very easy to understand these two terms only. No need to look on the every word or the details study of these two. Just try to understand what is the meaning of bottom up and the other one is top down. Because later the time we will discuss in detail what is the bottom up and top down. Bottom up method. In this method, one collects, consolidates, and vision and user recommend molecules into structures. We start with the very small size particle or we just group them, reduce into a structure or you start with the amorphous material and by some mechanism increase the size of property and the best example is the chemical co-precipitation technique by using some chemical reactions or controlled chemical reaction we can increase the size of particle and as size increases the property of material also changes so in this method where we are talking about bottom of metal is we start with the smallest size particle and we are moving towards the highest thing. So you can say start with the nano and moving towards the bulk is known as bottom of metal. Top down metal. What is the meaning of top down? Top means we are talking about <coughs> larger size particles. So we start with the larger size particles and reduce the dimensions to nano size particles. That is known as top down metal. In this approach, one starts with the large scale object or pattern and gradually reduces its dimension or dimensions. This can be accomplished by a technique called lithography. The easiest way to understand the top down method is suppose I have a bulk size sample and I have a glass light. 
I use electric discharge method or any other method and just make a vacuum system where I will put my glass light and operate the bulb size and bulb and in presence of vacuum and very high potential. When the material, bulb material is evaporated, it starts to deposit on the glass slide and the deposited material is about of nano size. So that is what we say. Mesoprapy, a thin bulk coating of the metal is deposited on a suitable substrate. Remember, substrate depends on what we are looking for. Here, the easiest way is if I deposit a film on the glass slide, then the glass slide is not a substrate. Radiation resists usually a polymer is coated on the metal thin film. A mass is placed between the resist coated substrate and the radiation source by using suitable chemical resist is removed. The unexposed part is chemically treated to produce nanostructure. So, when we talk about the lithography, the easiest technology, but it is a costly one because here we need the complete setup where we need a vacuum system or high potential system. Applications of nanotechnology. Now, what are the major applications of nanotechnology? The first one approximately 99% of medicinal molecules from this their target and substitute the body of the patient. <coughs> the first application of nanotechnology. Everybody says when we have a headache, we we'll take a tablet for headache. When we have body ache, it may possible we we'll take the same tablet. But now is that tablet affect our whole body 